Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam shows off Ubuntu 12.04. Ubuntu, what? Yeah, that's right. This is geared for new users who've never seen Ubuntu 12.04 or the Unity desktop. So if you've been following along in this series, this is Ubuntu 12.04, your newly installed operating system. Now I was going to take a lot of time to explain the Ubuntu interface, uh, also known as the Unity desktop environment. But um, in prepping for the show, I actually uh, saw an awesome YouTube video that I'm actually going to link to. Uh, it's a little bit lengthy, it's around 28 minutes, but the guy does a fantastic job explaining Ubuntu, the ins and outs of it uh, for 12.04. So I'm just going to link to that watch that then come back to my video all right welcome back and hopefully Ubuntu 12.04 makes a little bit more sense for you uh, because this is such a unique operating system or at least they've, they've changed the paradigm of how you actually interact with your operating system um, I want to show some uh, workflow things so uh, this will be the purpose of this video and also to enhance the video you just saw now I must confess, I really haven't been using Ubuntu 12.04, well at least the Unity desktop environment at all. Um, before this video, uh, I was using XFCE and the awesome Windows Manager. So in preparation for this video, I've actually spent two solid weeks hardcore in Ubuntu 12.04 in the Unity desktop environment, just to see everything I could get out of it. And to be honest with you, I actually really, really like it, uh, which really surprised me. Um, I've, I've never really hated Unity. I know a lot of people may not like this desktop environment. I've never hated it, but uh, I didn't really think it was for me. And after using it, um, I think this may be what I use 95% of the time. Now, uh, there are still some minor bugs here and there. Uh, especially just when like moving windows and stuff around but uh, overall I found this to be super stable and no showstoppers so now I just want to enhance what the video um, uh, mentioned but uh, may not have been that clear I'm just gonna launch my home folder here uh, also known as the file manager and the file manager program is called Nautilus just for your information so um, Right now, uh, this is just a normal window. Um, if I click this button here, it's going to maximize. Everyone's used to that from uh, probably the Windows operating system or another Linux distribution. Um, so when I click that, um, the that now goes away, or at least it looks like it's gone away. But what happens is, is if you go up here, it actually um, just uh, is hidden from the user. So well, when you're in a maximized state, you just have to go up here to close the window. So at this point, I'm just going to simulate you having a whole bunch of applications open. I just have a whole bunch of um, the file manager open uh, and my update manager. But um, one of the things you can do is uh, it's called expose mode. Um, uh, if you hit the Windows key, uh, also a lot of people refer to the Windows key as the super key. So Windows key equals super key. Uh, but hit the Windows key and the W on your keyboard. And you go into what this, this is called the expose mode. So then you can just uh, click whatever one you want. Um, and that will come to the front. So uh, I'll pick the settings manager that comes to the front. Um, if I pick the uh, update manager that will now come to the front. So uh, that's a nice way to see all the applications and quickly uh, navigate to the one you want. So another tip that wasn't really explained in the uh, the video was if you hold down the Windows key, um, they explained that the uh, the keyboard shortcuts comes up. So this is a great place to reference um, everything that I'm doing. But also, if you look here on the left hand side uh, on the uh, launcher, um, you'll see there's a number associated with everything. So um, what that means is if I hit the Windows plus the one, it'll launch this here. If I hit Windows plus two, it will now launch Firefox. So um, I can quickly launch uh, my most used applications um, just by using the uh, keyboard shortcut accordingly. So if you're ever in doubt which one you want to launch, just hold down the Windows key and see which number pops up. Also, if you rearrange, it will change the number. So I'm moving up LibreOffice to one. So now that should come one, Windows one. And then now LibreOffice will actually open up. One of the first things I recommend doing in Ubuntu 12.04 after you've just installed is checking for updates. So uh, if you click up here, you can click the um, this little icon here, and then you can say uh, update available, click that, and then the uh, update manager will pop up. Since this is a fresh install, you can see I have 444 updates. Um, so uh, I think it's a good idea to just install these updates so that way any uh, bugs or security issues uh, that may have been found will automatically get uh, updated to your system. 
So one of the other things I'm going to show you how to do is fix this horrible wallpaper. Uh, honestly, I can't stand orange and this purpley crap, so we are going to fix that immediately. So uh, if you've got the stock install, um, you can click the system settings icon here. If you don't see that, you can just hit the Windows key, and then you can click uh, the, um, you can just type in system, um, and then you can just click the system settings that way. So multiple ways to get to this. Um, and then here, we're just going to click appearance. And then here you can change your wallpaper, maybe something like this. By default, not that many themes are installed in Ubuntu 12.04. Uh, in a future video, I will show you how to actually add themes. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, um, so that's an advanced feature. But uh, you do have at least four settings. These two are horrible, but uh, Radiance isn't too bad. Um, if you wanted to add in your own wallpaper, uh, you can just click here, and then you can actually just search for a picture, and you can add a wallpaper in that way. So one of the other things I want to show you real quick was how to navigate um, applications uh, a little bit better. Um, Ubuntu 12.04 is awesome if you know the name of the application, but if you don't know the name or what you want, then it can be a little bit challenging searching through all your applications. So what you're going to do is hit the Windows key. I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to click this to maximize this, um, this dash. Uh, and then we're going to switch the lens to uh, the applications lens, which is this icon down here. And then over here you can see um, uh, filters by results may be turned off. If you hit the filter results, uh, then you see you can start to break this down into something that's a little bit more manageable. Um, you can see all of your uh, installed. Um, so this is everything on my system. And as you install software, this list will just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so if you wanted to look for something for like media, like let's say you wanted like a movie player, but don't, don't know what it's called, well you can just click media and hopefully it'll be in there. Um, if you're looking for like graphics manipulation, um, you can see now uh, uh, everything that's installed that has to do with graphics. So um, accessories or system uh, for, for doing stuff with your system networking tools. So this is a great way on how to find all of your applications. And if you just want to see everything on your system, just unclick all filters off and you can see your entire list. And this will grow. Okay, at this point I just want to go over some workflow ideas uh, just to help you enhance the Ubuntu 12.04 experience. So one of the first things that I found super helpful was learning the keyboard shortcuts. I mean, you don't have to learn them all, but remember if you hold down the Windows key, you can see all the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, honestly, uh, Ubuntu 12.04 I feel is really geared towards the keyboard enthusiast. Another uh, friendly workflow tip is uh, don't forget about the middle mouse click on the launcher. So for example, I'm just opening up my home folder. Uh, if I wanted to open up another one, um, if I just left click, uh, it just brings this home folder into focus. Um, so I could right click and I could say open a new folder, or I could just middle mouse click down if you have a middle mouse scroll wheel, and it'll immediately launch. So that's much quicker than right clicking and saying open up new folder. Uh, the other thing that's kind of helpful is remember, um, uh, it takes some getting used to, but the HUD is actually super, super helpful. So um, remember this, the HUD, uh, if you hold down the uh, Alt key, will bring up um, uh, the ability to type in anything from a menu. Um, so once you start learning, like if you're always opening up a new tab, instead of going up to File, New Tab, you could just hit Alt and type that in. Okay, at this point I have a whole bunch of applications open. So I'll show you another uh, helpful workflow idea. Um, if you hold down the Windows S, as we already talked about, this allows you to see your different workspaces. Uh, don't be afraid to put uh, different apps on uh, different workspaces and to move stuff around. Um, so uh, I like to try to keep all like-minded apps on the same workspace. Uh, again, you can fool around with this and do whatever uh, you want to do. Um, but then what happens is, let's say I want to go to my home folder real quick. I just click that and it immediately brings me back there. But then I need to run back to terminal and it goes right back there. Also, I can hit, uh, um, since this is my number two on my uh, keyboard, I can hit the Windows key in number two and I immediately go back there. So um, don't be afraid to uh, uh, use workspaces and to drag around, um, especially if you have a lot of applications. Uh, it just makes a workflow much, much easier. Okay, at this point what I've done is I've set up um, having my file manager open up on three uh, different workspaces. And uh, I'll just uh, show you something real quick or just something to keep in mind. Um, so uh, when I click this, it'll go to the last home or the last uh, file manager that, that I use. But if I click this again, I cannot get to the uh, other ones on my different workspaces. So I'd actually have to uh, zoom in, zoom out. Um, however, if I put them all on the same 
workspace. Uh, then when I um, click the home folder, it'll go into an expose mode of just the home folders or the file manager. So that way I can pick the file manager I want. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're reorganizing uh, your application into different workspaces. If you have like say a whole bunch of terminals uh, and you're doing some stuff in there, maybe you would want to keep them on the same workspace. So just throwing that out there just so you understand how the Unity um, desktop environment works. And lastly, um, another helpful tip is I would say keep the most used applications at the top of your launcher. Uh, remember, you can just uh, grab it and then just rearrange uh, however the order you want. Um, but the reason for that is um, the most ones that you use, uh, that way you can just use your keyboard shortcut of window and then one, and then it will quickly launch. So uh, I definitely keep the top most five apps that I'm always launching um, in my launcher uh, in that order. So as I said before, after two weeks of me using Unity as my desktop environment, um, all I can say is it's really grown on me and uh, it, I, I, I want to use this thing. So um, who knows, maybe I'll change my opinion in the past. I'm always um, uh, bouncing between different desktop environments. Um, so here's my advice. Um, if you don't like it uh, from day one, that's okay. Uh, it is definitely unique. Uh, give it a few days. Maybe say, I'm going to use this for a week. And then if you still don't like it, uh, next week I'm going to show you how to install two other alternatives. Um, there's many, many more that you can install, but um, we're going to go over the awesome Windows Manager, um, which is uh, super hardcore. Um, uh, and that's pretty much, I would recommend, you, you're going to have to do a lot of research on your own because it's going to be a while before I get to that segment. I'll show you how to install it, but then any modifications that you want to do to that uh, will be totally up to you and it will be a lot of work. Um, Another easier one to get into is XFCE. Uh, this is more of your traditional desktop. Um, I'll show you some very, very basic stuff next week with it, but um, that one you'll probably feel more at home because that's more what you're used to, uh, especially if you're coming from Windows 7 or, 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 or Windows XP or something like that. It's, it's more of a traditional desktop. All right, that's it for me. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com.